diesel oils. Are they really better than passenger car oils? Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and some people think diesel oils are better than passenger car oils. Now this whole idea hinges on diesel oils being chemically different than passenger car oils. They are, but does that difference actually equate to a benefit for non-diesel engines? To answer that question, we first need to understand why diesel oils are chemically different than passenger car oils. To do that, we had to come here to Dave's Auto Center in Centerville, Utah. So my good buddy Dave Bell here can explain to you the mechanical differences between a gasoline engine and a diesel engine. And the mechanical difference is basically compression. A gasoline engine today, it depends on if it's uh, port fuel injected or direct injection. Mm -hmm. Direct injection, you get a little more compression out of them. Why, you know, the LT, some of the Europeans now are going to direct injection, get a little more power. But on a diesel, you've got twice the amount of compression to run a diesel engine. And of course, we don't have an ignition system right. on a diesel. We this is spark ignition, that is compression ignition. ignition. And one of the things about that compression ignition, which is key to the difference in the chemistry between a diesel oil and a gasoline engine oil, what causes that compression ignition? What event generates that? The delivery of the fuel at the right moment mm -hmm during the compression of this engine. A little bit about these different injectors. On a diesel injector, usually, you guys that are real good at this, this is a Cummins, you're gonna know that. This is not a Cummins injector, I believe it's a 6.0 power stroke. But anyway, same thing. We've got a lot of fuel pressure coming in that's being squirted under very high pressure, 25 to 30,000 PSI, into the combustion chambers, that piston's coming up and down. It's actually being injected more than once during a compression cycle. This injector here, is a little different. You can actually see the pintle holes in here. You'll notice on a diesel injector, you're not gonna see any holes in that. And this is a port fuel injector. This is for a gasoline engine. This is almost like a, a sprinkler head in your yard. It just, mm -hmm. psh, it's a gasoline inside the combustion chamber. It's not in the intake runner. It's injecting fuel into the combustion chamber, just like a diesel injector does under high pressure. But the thing with this, with a direct injection gasoline, that injection cycle is taking place way before the piston Pissing. here is top dead center. center. So it has more time for the fuel to vaporize. When that piston is actually pretty near top, top dead, dead center, center, then the fuel goes in. And it's the injection of the fuel that bumps the compression even higher sure. that causes the auto ignition. Because of that, there's not a lot of time for that fuel to go from that liquid state in small droplets into a vapor because engines do not burn liquid fuel. Yeah, they we, only burn vapor is what you're after. You know, or a bucket of gas, don't try this at home and throw a match in it, it'll put the match out. But if you spread that out where you've got vapor, and that's, that's where it's the same thing with, with uh, diesel and gas. Absolutely. So what happens with a diesel engine with that fine injection, some of that doesn't ever turn into a vapor, so it doesn't burn. And when it becomes- I know where we're going with this. Is soot. Yeah, I knew. That's it. why diesel sometimes have that black smoke rolling, that's soot. You know, you talk about it, Gail Banks talks about it, you're basically burning cash. When, you know, yes. you're just burning money, fuel, when you got all that soot coming out your rear end, that is unburned fuel. You're wasting money. And sometimes that unburned fuel, instead of coming out the tailpipe, that soot is doing what? Going right by the piston rings, contaminating your oil, causing excessive wear, building up EGR problems. Soot's not good. It is not a good thing for your engine or for your oil. And this is where diesel oil is chemically different than passenger car oil. Yeah to handle the soot. Speaking of API ratings, because diesels use compression ignition, diesel oils are API C 
rated. And gasoline engines, because they are spark ignition, are API S rated. The current API diesel rating is CK4, and the current API gasoline rating is SP, but coming soon is SQ. So C stands for compression ignition, diesel oil. S stands for spark ignition, gasoline engine oil. Of course, the European ACEA spec is completely different, so we'll save that for another video. A typical diesel engine oil will have twice the amount of detergent and dispersant additives to help control the soot compared to a passenger car, a gasoline engine oil. That's one of the big differences here between these two engines that lead to that differences in the oil. And there's a big difference in how the engines respond to that. Because that detergent dispersant additive that's great for handling soot actually competes against the ZDP and anti-wear for a gasoline engine. You know, and there's a cult, I call it a cult, you know, we, there's certain people that just want to run diesel oil in their gasoline engines. And especially, I'm thinking where we're headed with this, on a direct injection engine, you're just rolling the dice for something that could be real ugly. It could be. Because I'm always about the science, not, not the speculation. speculation. Let's look at some test data that backs up both of these claims. As we mentioned earlier, the treat rates between a heavy duty diesel oil and a passenger car engine oil are really different because of the detergent dispersant chemistry added to the diesel additive package. And you can see that right here in these two additive packages from Afton Chemical. The premium tier high tech 11180 additive package treat rate is 10%. Some of the budget tier additive packages treat rate is around 8%. Compare that to the premium diesel oil additive package, high tech 12400. Its treat rate is 16% and can even have a booster to push it even further for higher levels of performance. That booster is High Tech 611, which is a calcium detergent. So you can see there's a big difference in treat rate between a diesel package and a passenger car package. And most of that difference is gonna be in the detergent and dispersant chemistry, which competes against the ZDP and the Molly, the anaerobic additives. And we can see that competition right here in these flat tappet camshaft wear results. That's right, in my time at Driven as the R&D manager, we work closely with competition cams to make special flat tappet camshafts just for oil testing. Because Comp Cams has ad coal machines that are capable of measuring camshaft wear to a millionth of an inch, we were able to accurately measure flat tappet camshaft wear with all kinds of different oils. And you can see from these results, two really popular diesel engine oils didn't do so well compared to two API SP rated oils of around the same viscosity. All four of these oils had similar levels of ZDP. In fact, the diesel oil that did the best actually had the lowest level of ZDP. If you remember from our video about ZDP and how more zinc isn't always better, these results shouldn't surprise you. More ZDP doesn't guarantee better wear protection. I'm gonna say that one more time. More ZDP, more zinc in your oil, doesn't guarantee more wear protection. Zinc has to compete against the calcium, against the detergent dispersant chemistries in these oils. And the two diesel oils have more detergent dispersant chemistry in them than the two API SP rated oils. You can see the results right here. Less calcium means less detergent. Diesel formulation means more dispersant. When you have less calcium, less dispersant, for the same level as ADP, you get better wear protection. It's not just about zinc, and these results show it. So many people choose diesel oils because of that higher level of zinc, thinking they're getting better wear protection. 
As you can see from these results, that's not always the case. From the lowest level of detergent to the highest level of detergent, the amount of wear tripled three times more wear with the higher level of detergent. Now, before you think, hey, I'm just gonna go put some passenger car oil in my diesel oil because it's got better wear protection, don't do that either because the exact opposite's going to happen. Diesel oils are designed to handle soot. Passenger car oils are not designed to handle soot. And you can see from these results that the exact opposite happens when you put a really good gasoline engine oil in a diesel. In this case, the ZDP levels are again about the same, but the detergent levels are different because of it being a diesel engine oil versus a passenger car engine oil designed to protect against low speed pre-ignition. Those higher levels of calcium are not good in a direct injection engine. It causes low speed pre-ignition. Lower levels of calcium protect against low speed pre-ignition. So when you put an oil designed for a gasoline direct injection engine and you put it in a diesel, look what happened. The wear is three times higher in this case. Someone's always saying that application always dictates chemistry. Here's a pretty good example of that yet again. And when you look a little bit closer at these results, you'll see there was a little more soot in the passenger car samples, despite having almost half the amount of mileage as the real diesel oil sample. The diesel oil is doing a better job handling the soot which is generating less wear. The passenger car oil isn't handling the soot as well, so we're getting more cylinder bore wear. And you can see that from the chromium levels. Chromium is from the piston rings. That's that face coating on the rings, and it's the telltale sign that the wear we're seeing here is 100% soot-related wear because these oils are about the same viscosity, the same level of ZDP chemistry, so what's the difference? It's the soot handling isn't there in the passenger car oil that's in the diesel oil. But remember, this diesel oil has a higher level of calcium, which means it's not good for a turbocharged direct injection engine. As we just discussed about that detergent level and how important it is, here's a real world example of what can happen if you have that high detergent diesel oil in a gasoline direct injection engine. Yeah, we pulled this out of the Audi uh, A6. A lot of people don't realize is we're lucky to have this. A lot of times when this happens, the, it, it's a grenade. Everything it, else is there, gone. Yeah, there really isn't any evidence. It's kind of like what happened here. Right. But if you'll come in close, what happened here? In fact, Lake, why don't you explain this? You'll, you can go ahead and explain so that. So in this top ring groove, you had a mixture of that calcium detergent along with the oil and the fuel. That chemical cocktail auto ignited inside the ring groove and blew the side of the piston off. So instead of having the pre-ignition like we get on gasoline engines mm -hmm. up here in right. the combustion chamber, it actually happens down here in a very weakened area mm -hmm. and you're, you're getting an explosion where it was never designed to happen and hence, we got this big blowout. Absolutely, right I mean, this is textbook. Yeah. Low speed pre-ignition, which happens because that high detergent level that can be present in a diesel oil actually increases the tendency of this to happen. The API on direct injection, I mean, they've changed it. What is, what is the recommended manufacturer? They say now the API, SP, SP is the current spec, SQ is the next spec uh -huh. coming out. To pass those tests that detect whether or not there's a tendency for low speed pre-ignition, it's pretty common today for a passenger car, you know, gasoline oil, to be less than a thousand parts per million calcium detergent, where diesel oils can be 1,500 to 2,500 uh -huh. parts per million, more than likely, that oil that caused that was probably over 1,500 parts per million. So really, I, what I hear you saying is, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, you're gonna stay with that old school idea that you know diesel oil is gonna be good in my gasoline. You're really playing Russian roulette, and you could have it could blow up literally in your face. Absolutely. So as we've shown in this video, we gave you three really good examples that application always dictates chemistry. 
If you try to play backyard formulator, you might end up having to bring your engine to this guy. Yeah, and I'm busy. Do your maintenance, do it right. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're gonna be coming back with more videos just like this and other fun stuff because hey, I'm Lake, the Motor World Geek. Thanks for watching.